Happy New Year, creatives. I can't believe that it's already the end of 2023. In this week's video, I show you a peek into the art nest that Don created for himself as he heals from his surgery. And then I invite you into the studio where I do a little bit of a refresh on my studio as a way to let go of all the negativity from 2023 and to prepare my creative space for new inspiration that will be birthed in 2024. It's also my hope that this video will be a reminder that creativity is not a rare ability. It's not difficult to access. It's a fundamental aspect of being human. It's our birthright and it's for and in all of us. Creativity doesn't exclusively relate to art making. We all engage in this act on a daily basis. To live as an artist is a way of being in the world, a way of perceiving, a practice of paying attention looking for what draws us in and pushes us away, noticing what feelings arise and where they lead us. Your entire life is a form of self-expression. You exist as a creative being in a creative universe. You are a singular work of art. That was a modified quote from the book, The Creative Act, A Way of Being. I hope you guys have a very creative, happy, and healthy New Year, and I hope you enjoy the video. So my sweetie's still recovering from his surgery with his right arm and elbow, right wrist and elbow, but he got all kinds of art supplies for Christmas. So this was new, Crayola Signature Watercolor Crayons, that's those. And he got this set of watercolor, twin tipped watercolor markers. These are King Art from King Art. And he got a set of three Food and, food and Soaky, is that how you say it? The Tombow uh, three set. He got a fountain pen. What else did you get? I don't know. Like for chainsaw. Oh, yeah. Well, I meant art supplies. <laughs> but left handed, a little tricky. Not supposed to be using his right hand, but he's still got the bandage on the elbow. We were able to take the bandage off the wrist part. You want help? I'll get it. This is one of his artworks from before. So he's using that as inspiration. That's one of his artworks from before. So that's one of his paintings. These are watercolors. Isn't that cool? He loves to do these old trucks, but I love his abstract background in that that's one of his that's one of his anyways i want to leave him alone so he can do his work but he uh i'm really happy that he's using his art materials as part of his healing process what do you think bubba yeah that's a good thing you happy you got art supplies well, i sure am and these are gonna be fun i can tell so he can only work left-handed which is pretty cool and I think these are water soluble, babe. Are I think they? You, yeah, you I think you can smudge them with a um with a paintbrush. Mm, good. I like smudging. Yeah. This is that Fabriano paper. I showed you guys that fat pad that I got. So that's the Fabriano paper. And I think I'm going to take you guys upstairs and show you what I am going to be doing in the studio today because I'm not feeling as inspired as Don is to get creating. So I gotta push myself to get up there and um, get something done. Left-handed, baby, that is cool. I love left-handed drawing. Yeah, me too. Where are some of my left-handed ones? Okay, so last night he was playing in the living room with his left hand. Oh, let me see that one. So doing a left-handed tree. And this was a mix of the Tombow markers and the Crayola crayons. Oh yeah, this this one like a little uh, abstracted landscape. That's pretty cool. Oh, I like that one a lot. That was uh, what pencil and then the Tombow uh, markers crayon. and then the crayons on top of the Tombow markers. That's pretty cool. I like how you just outlined them with the color and didn't fill them in. I think that's a really cool look. Those uh, Crayola watercolor crayons are really pigmented. 
All right, have some fun. I'm gonna make oh, some well. coffee and go upstairs. Have fun. You're welcome to come upstairs and create up there if you want. I like sitting here. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Drive safe. All right, don't get swelling in your hand. Make sure you put it on ice. Yep. Okay, so I got my cup of coffee. Bubba is happily at work. Let's see, lift up your hand for a second with his, what is the Land Rover? Vehicle. <laughs> with his funky left-handed truck and the King R. Have you tried wetting them with water yet to see if they work? <clears throat> no. Okay, well, we're going to leave you to it and go upstairs. Toshi, you want to come upstairs with Mama? We're going to do some rearranging in the studio. Does that sound like fun? Huh? Come on, let's go. Coffee in hand. Let's head up to the studio. My messy, messy studio. Put my coffee down. Hope I'm not making you nauseous with this one-handed filming. All right, here we are. I hope that you guys had a peaceful and relaxing Christmas. And I, in, in full disclosure and true honesty, I am so glad that Christmas is over between everything that we have had going on with the mold in the house, trying to get the cottage built this year, um, Don having surgery, the neighbor coming after us with an appeal against subdividing our land, everything that's been going off to try to pull off um, a Christmas this year felt hugely overwhelming to me. Um, this year all through, as you guys that have followed me know, has been super challenging and it ended um, really challenging. So um, this video is going to be about moving forward. Came up to the studio, got my cup of coffee, down, Don's downstairs, happily creating in uh, with the art supplies he got for Christmas. I feel good about that. Such a great way to recover from surgery. So I came up here and I'm not feeling motivated. He's feeling motivated to create with his new art supplies. I'm not feeling motivated to create. I'm exhausted. Um, you know, just to be real and honest about things, I watch these YouTube videos sometimes where people have this, these bottomless fountains of energy and creativity. And well, I, the truth is I'm not there. I'm not there right now. It's been a rough year. I'm happy to see it end. I'm glad Christmas is over. I'm exhausted. So in order to get myself feeling creatively, and, and the, but there are things, I want to say there are things that I'm thinking about that I have in mind. There's things percolating really deep within me um, that I feel like I want to come out creatively. I do, I do have a seed of inspiration in me. I'm just really tired and it needs to be watered to be brought out. I kind of know where I want to go. When I set up my painting wall here a few months ago, I changed this all out and uh, showed it in a YouTube video, I think. I was feeling really inspired by um, doing abstracts. And I still love this work. I actually need to sell this work. Um, and I'm t I've become terrible about putting paintings that I have for sale on my website. It's really exhausting and I have so many paintings. I probably have thousands of paintings that I should be listing on there for sale. Um, yeah, and what I did a year, maybe a year or two ago, might have even been two years ago, was I actually took out all these boxes over here that have stacks and stacks of paintings in them. And I took them out and I opened them up and I started to film them on a video that I thought I was gonna post on YouTube. It was um, a huge amount of editing involved in it and I never finished the video. So now the video is like two years old. A lot of those paintings have probably sold and there's tons of more new paintings. So I don't even know if I can use that footage anymore, but it's not really a bad idea. I almost wonder if I should revisit that idea in the new year of filming all the paintings that I have that are for sale and putting it out on YouTube. Um, and then if somebody was interesting, they could always do a screenshot of the painting that they were interested in and ask for more info by messaging me. I don't know. It's just one of the things that I really should do. I should lighten up. So what I'm going to do for my inspiration, though, is kind of closing out the old year um, and moving into the new is I'm going to take down all the paintings on my inspiration wall and I'm going to put up 
paintings that I've done in the past that have the feeling of what I, I feel like I want to move into, it's, um, it's, it's so hard to put these things into words, an inspirational feeling or an uh, inspirational uh, journey that you, you want to embark on. But I'm going to put some of those paintings up to sort of remind me of where I've been creatively that felt really authentic and to help guide me into what I'm trying to give birth to in the new year creatively. There's something I know that wants to come out of me. I have an idea of what it looks like, but I've been kind of stalled for months actually on actually birthing this idea out. And the new year is such a great time to do that. So that's what I'm going to do. Part of what inspired it was doing this uh, wartime nativity painting that I did. And we turned it into a Christmas card this year. This felt really good. I like narrative art. I uh, used to do a lot more narrative art. I really enjoyed this process. So this felt like it was sort of moving into the right direction. And um, yeah, I figured I would invite you guys on the journey with me today because coming up here, the truth is if I was to try to sit down and paint right now, I feel like it would be tiring. I feel like it would be, it would just make me feel more exhausted. I need something to foster this new creative journey that I want to go on. And I can't think of a better way to do that than to clean off the old and put up some new inspirational work. So I'm inviting you along for that journey. Um, let's usher in the new year with new work. Okay, let's see how it goes. First, I got to get my carts out of the way because I got to get into these shelves. Woo! It would be a good thing if I didn't tip them over. And I haven't really thought about where I'm going to set these boxes. I probably need to clean my table off. Hmm, this has been sitting up here for a bit since, ooh, since I did that painting, maybe? I probably should do some palette cleanup pages with this. I think I'm gonna grab those two sketchbooks that I just moved to the side and slap some of this paint on there for palette cleanup pages. This is like, you know, the dog where the squirrel gets distracted. But that's good. It's creative, right? Okay, I'm not going to get fancy with this or anything. I'm just going to smear some of this paint onto the pages in two different journals and um, go from there. Let's see. Okay, so that is what I came up with for the palette cleanup pages. Just smearing it on there, really not worrying at all about what anything looks like. That's this one. And I'm gonna let those dry and I'm going to um, clean this up so it doesn't get moldy on me. I'm gonna Rinse off the paper and see if that can be saved and then rinse out the sponge and put some hydrogen peroxide on it to combat any mold that might have gotten started. So I'll be back. I probably should mention that when I say that I'm spraying, I'm rinsing my sponge out and I'm spraying it with peroxide, what I use is a mixture of um, peroxide and water, because if you do use straight hydrogen peroxide on this, it will eat the sponge. It'll kind of rot it out. Learned that by uh, trial, you know, doing it myself. So mix um, peroxide with water and spray it on both sides of the sponge and then squeeze it out and it prevents the sponge from getting moldy. Then I just sort of hang the sponge 
on my sink and with the paper with acrylics if it if the paper the acrylics wash off if they haven't completely dried out and they rinse off this much you can still reuse these papers and they re-wet the second time much easier. You don't have to soak them in the super hot water for 15 minutes. They re-wet super easily, so it's good to reuse them. So I'm gonna dry, hang these two things to dry them out and then clear the table off again and pull some painting boxes out. Okay, so I just found another rabbit hole that I'm gonna go down. I, this whole counter is covered with tubes of golden paint um, and I keep my acrylic paints in here. So I'm going to go, this is where I keep most of my golden anyways. So I'm going to put all of these away to clear off this counter too, because this has been, has all the paints on it from when I was working on that painting. So let's do that. Okay, so that clears that off a little bit, gives me a little bit more room. I do need to find a better place to store my oil pastels. Um, yeah, I got to think about that more at some point because this, this part of my counter is still clogged up pretty bad. This, um, yeah, these brushes could find a better home somewhere. And this stack of oil pastels... I need to find, and this is all drawing tools like charcoal, stabilos, these XL charcoals that I love, my art gaff. I use those things a lot when I'm over here on the easel. So I'm thinking about maybe clearing off some room on this tray to put those kind of drawing tools. Yeah, that seems like a good place. But then the question is, where is the stuff that's on this tray going to go? Another rabbit hole, but I would like more room cleared off up there. So let me think about that for a minute. Okay, so I got this table cleared off and ready for those boxes. There's my obscenely large paintbrush collection. Some of them ancient and decrepit, and some of them relatively new. I haven't bought brushes in quite a while, I don't think. But yeah, I'm obsessed with brushes. I do use most of them um, when I'm feeling well and actually painting at my easel. And I love paint brushes. So yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, but I got all of this area cleared off. So I'll be able to put the boxes with the paintings there. I got my area around my easel cleaned off. I got all of those paints off of there and put away. Got the pastels put away down there, which is really good. Uh, Push some of the drawing tools back. Some of my mixed media tools and palettes there. Another jar of brushes. These actually I bought not that long ago. I love, love, love this brush. Liquitex Freestyle for using on the easel. Wow, really nice brush. Okay, so there's still more I could do. I need to deal with all this at some point, but it's progress, you know? I'm feeling good about getting that counter cleared off, getting all my golden paints in there. Uh, yeah, I just hesitate to show you too much more <laughs> around the corner because everything needs tidying, really. Everything needs tidying. Over there, I got those those um, sketchbooks that I just put paint on over there. But my sketchbooks are still in pretty good order on the shelves. That stayed organized, but got to get that plant put back after it drains. And um, yeah, I'm going to grab some boxes of paintings to put over there to go through. I hope you're enjoying this sort of whirlwind, squirrely rabbit hole journey I'm going on as I sort of prep my studio to let go of 2023 and welcome 2024. And I'm really allowing myself the freedom to just move into each area of my studio 
as I feel. I'm not being rigid about the task at hand. I want this to be very organic and I want the studio to have a good feeling for me when I'm done. And I think it's a very good healing way to move into the new year. So I think I'm ready to finally get those boxes out or some of them. I'm not gonna get all of them out. So even though I found a lot of work that I loved in that box, I love these charcoal drawings with the white and the black charcoal just on newsprint. Um, I felt like these were inspiring, but they're not what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, I liked them. They're just not what I was looking for. And Let's see, what else did I have here? It's interesting to me that looking at the past, even though there's so much work that I love, I can tell I'm feeling something different for the future. I love that one. I think it's so expressive. So I may keep that one aside. I think that's really powerful with the Scrafito writing. Um, yeah, I may keep that one aside. This one, oh, sorry, I think I keep, oh, I hope I haven't been hitting the camera the whole time. This one is interesting. Not quite what I'm thinking about, but I do love it. Um, this one I love. This was back when we had the goats. I love it. It's just... Not sure it's what I'm looking for. This one I I do love. I really love that one a lot. I may, I may keep that one out. Um, this one I've always loved. With the gold paint. That's more narrative. I'm thinking of like more narrative work like these, but in a looser style like this. I think that's what it is with these paintings. I love them, but in a, I, I like it in a looser style. 
I really do love that one. And you know what? I almost feel like I'm confusing myself by looking back. I thought it would be an inspiration. I like how loose this one is. Lots of layers and scratching in. I really like that. This one is an interesting surrealistic painting. So I do like that. It's still not exactly what I'm looking for. I like how much looser this face is. I've always loved this style of painting where you do a background and then you cut in with gesso or white paint to carve out figures. That's actually inspiring. That's interesting, really expressive. Another uh, surrealistic painting. I love the imagery. I'm just thinking looser, maybe painting it looser. I like that. I love the rawness to that. I love this a lot, actually. I think I'll keep that one out. Love this one, but it's very tight. I just, I really love that floral background. This was one that was um, done during a Misty Mon class that I took. Um, and that's the one where I made the art journals. I am taking another one of her classes in January. And I think we're going to make art journals again in that class. And... Um, yeah, I'll have to show you. I think that's what it is. I think a lot of the work that I'm remembering is actually in my sketchbooks. Um, so I may need to pull out my sketchbooks and go back through them to find exactly what it is that I'm looking for. And I may not find exactly what it is that I'm looking for. Um, I like these on the canvas, on the raw canvas. But again, it's not exactly what I'm looking for. I do like this a lot. I like that a lot. I may hang that one back up. Beginner's mind. <laughs> I'll be darned. I'll be darned. This was way before I thought of the beginner's mind channel, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I need to... That one I definitely need to keep out. Okay, so... Oh, and then these. You know, this is... I really enjoyed making these. And this is a great way to warm up, so... I'm going to keep a couple of these out, I think. Uh, just to remind me of what a great exercise that is for warming up. So that's that box. I have these three boxes over here, but I'm pretty sure these are more um, representational work. I'll flip through a couple of them and see what I've got.
So I just wanted to give you guys a quick peek at Don's artwork that he did yesterday, you know, as his for healing and dealing with his boredom while he's recovering and not able to use his hand. And this is the one that I showed you in the beginning. And it's a combination of the crayons, the Crayola and the King Art markers. Um, and then this was gouache, right? Yeah, I guess the road. Okay, he's being shy this morning. He doesn't want to be on camera. But what were you just saying about this? This is... Oh, the... those, those are the markers. You can just lay them on the side and kind of wave them around. And... So you got those blooms with the markers. Well, you, you do that and a little bit of water here and there. And got my blooms. Wow. Oh, wow. They're nice. And then he was saying he did this green chair with the markers. It's really dark in here. I don't know if this is coming out. But, yeah, so... King, these King Art markers are much higher quality than I thought they would be, and they were a really good deal when I purchased them for him for Christmas. And these Crayola water-soluble crayons also are a really good deal. And this you did with your new fountain pen, right? Right. Cool. All right. You going to do some arting today? I might. All right. He doesn't want me to show him on camera. He's being shy, but... Okay, I just want to update you guys and show you what he's up to while he's doing his art nest art and his dining room art nest. Okay, so it's the next day. I fell down an incredible uh, rabbit hole yesterday afternoon and I ended up overdoing it and really exhausted. I'm going to take the camera out of the stand and hand hold it and show you how I ended up leaving my studio yesterday afternoon because um, I, st I overdid it and I started to feel really ill and um, I'm actually losing my voice a little bit. But um, so I just had to sort of leave everything the way it was. Never got the paintings off the wall, never got new paintings up, but it was the journey. It was where I was supposed to go with it. You know, I allowed myself to just sort of move through what I needed to move through and I'm glad I did. But, um, and I still haven't completed, but I'm going to flip the camera around and show you what happened. Okay, so what I ended up doing yesterday after I um, shut the video off was I had all my portfolios stacked behind my desk and I pulled them all out. Um, I had an old canvas that I had been working on years ago. I mean, that might actually even be 10 years old, that painting. Um, it's on a acrylic, it's acrylic paint on a, on a stretched canvas. And so I pulled that out. 
um, I'm, I loved that painting. I, never, I, I feel like I never completed it, but looking at it now, I think it's pretty cool. I haven't even completely gone through all these portfolios yet. There's a lot of old art that I think I may just get rid of because um, I'd rather not stuff them back behind my desk. I'd rather not have stuff stuffed away like that. But these are two pieces that I grabbed out of them before I completely quit. I really wish there was a year on this wild woman because I remember when I was in that wild woman phase. Oh gosh, when was that? Like in the 90s? Probably in the 90s, the early early 90s, 91, 92. Seemed like we were all in this wild woman phase and painting these wild women and I love her. I have always adored her and I haven't seen her in years. So I was really happy to unearth her. I think she's fabulous. Um, and then this one is one that I did, gosh, I don't know, a couple of years ago. Um, there's a girl on Instagram and I'll, I'll try to remember to put her name below the video. I just can't think of it right now, but she models and she posts a lot of pictures and videos and she does storytelling professionally. And this was one of the photos that she posted. And this painting was done with golden open acrylics and it kicked my butt. Looks like it's coming out really red in the camera. Might just not be lit well enough, but I love that painting. I hope the plastic isn't, um, you know, making it too reflective. I just love that painting. It kicked my butt. I don't have any desire to paint like that now, but I really love that. And it's been stuffed away in a portfolio. So yeah, I'm happy to get those two pieces out. I'm happy to get um, that painting out. Um, and I have no idea what else is in here. I haven't even pulled them apart and I don't think I'm gonna do that today. What I think I am gonna do now is finally take all these paintings down. If I was smart, I would photograph them first and list them on my website as being for sale. Like these ones I would cut up into individual paintings, the ones that are connected. Um, I love those. I would be happy to sell those. But right now the task at hand is going to be um, just to take this stuff down. This was the paper that I did uh, and on the Blick packing paper, if you remember. Yeah, so. I've loved this wall setup. I really have. It's, um, it's been really inspiring while it was here. I just really, I love that one with the raven kind of connected to threads to all these like egg shapes. That's a gorgeous painting. See, now I'm almost getting sad that I'm taking it down, but it's time. I want to do some changing around as I move into the new year. So that's going to, what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take those all down and then I'll just see what I put back up. I've got some of the work that I picked out of my bins. I've got these things. Um, yeah, so we'll see. I'm not sure what actually is going back up, but there are areas of my studio because of all these rabbit holes that have gotten cleaned up really nicely and sorted out. So that's good, but let's get to the wall finally. Okay, so this is one of those camera shots where I actually can't see what I'm filming because I'm filming on my phone and it's flipped the other way. Um, so I hope I have all of this in the shot. I'm going to go at it because these are paintings that I really like. I'm going to go at it with my X-Acto knife so that I don't rip any of them when I'm taking the tape off. I can always go back in and take the tape off later. Okay, let's go. Okay, so now that I have all this work piled up on my desk, I'm gonna flip back through it 
and um, just uh, try to pick out some pieces that feel very inspiring to me. You know, in the end of this, I may end up with an empty wall. I may not find what I'm looking for, and it may be that I just have to create this new work, just pull it out of me to put on the wall. But I'm gonna pick through this pile, see what I find, and um, look forward to the new year of creating more fearless art. Okay, beautiful creatives, that is the new wall of inspiration. And although there's a wide variety of work on here, I feel like it has a common theme in that it's all very emotive. Um, there's strong emotional elements to all of the work that is up here. And that's sort of, you know, important to me in the direction that I'm heading this year. Also maintaining some abstraction and drawing, which I've really been enjoying. Yeah, there's um, a lot of work up here and the goal will be to have this inspire me to create new work and th these will come down and um, they will be replaced by new work that I've created next year. So this was a much bigger project than I thought it would be. And I went down a lot of rabbit holes and it ended up being a bit too much for me. I, uh, yesterday afternoon and today I, just sort of my body is rebelling <laughs> against doing this much. So I am gonna rest and edit this video for the next couple of days. Um, tomorrow's Thursday, so I'm hoping to get it up for you Friday. But I did get some areas cleaned out. I didn't go through these portfolios. There's a bunch of them there and I need to go through those. Some of them are so old, I will probably be tossing a lot of the work on paper in there. but. I did get some tidying up done. I got some old work out, which felt inspiring. And I got my wall changed out. So I'm pleased with that. That was a good task to get done as the new year comes in. So I hope you guys are all doing well. And I hope that um, as the new year comes in that you will just be so inspired creatively and um, tidy up your studios or your creative spaces, go through your art supplies and think of, have a good think about what products you use and what products you're not using anymore. And um, yeah, dip, dive deep into your creative practice. Okay guys, happy, happy new year. Thank you so much for your subscribes, uh, likes, comments over the year. Thank you so much to my patrons for your support. Don and I are extremely grateful. Don't know how we would have gotten through the year without your support. Um, Happy New Year. God bless, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.